In our last video, we introduced the Sligger CX4178 case that our friend Brandon here Hi there. is about to build into a server. We spend a lot of time on the channel talking and working with servers, but usually pre-builds that we have bought off the Ebays. So this will be the first custom server build we've done from the ground up. Y'all wanna see what's inside? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let's get to it. Let's start with the motherboard and CPU. This server build will be the first Team Red build for 2GT. And what a better choice for a CPU than the AMD Epic 7302P. This CPU has a base clock of 3 GHz, which boosts to 3.3, 16 cores, 32 threads, and a TDP of 155 watts. Plenty of compute for virtualization. The motherboard is a Super Micro H11 SSL i motherboard. It supports 2 terabytes of RAM, has 3 16x and 3 8x PCIe slots, 16 SATA 3 ports, 1 M.2 NVMe slot, dual 1 gig LAN, ton of USB 3 and USB 2 ports, and a thing that really makes it a server motherboard, dedicated IPMI. I was able to get this CPU and motherboard package from eBay for a grand total of $748 and free shipping. Not a bad deal at all. Let's talk about storage and RAM. This build's focus will be compute only since Brandon has dedicated storage via iSCSI and NFS, so the storage in the host will only be for the OS. For the OS, we'll be installing a mirror pair of two ADATA SU655 120GB SSDs. The mirror is for redundancy in case one fails in operation. These SSDs came from Amazon, and they are a steal at $18 each. Now on to the RAM. The motherboard has 8 slots and we just so happen to have 8 sticks of 8GB DDR4 ECC RAM to fill out each slot for a grand total of 64GB of RAM for each server. In the future, we'll upgrade the RAM, but for now, 64GB is a great start. Networking is important for a server, and while we appreciate the 2x1GB copper ports in the back, they're just not enough speed for a server. So both server will get two 2x10GB SFP Plus NICs for LAN connectivity, and for backend storage to ensure the best performance possible. To power these monster servers, we'll be using standard ATX PSUs, specifically the Corsair HX750. This is a fully modular ATX PSU delivering 750 watts of power, which is plenty for our single socket Epic CPU and all the supporting hardware running with it. Brandon has a few older GPUs laying around that we'll be installing in each server to be used as part of his plan to create remote gaming VMs. All this glorious server hardware is going into the Slager CX4170A case that we reviewed recently. These cases are designed specifically for our server hardware, but are also flexible enough that if you wanted to build a rack-mounted ATX build, you could do that. Be sure to check out that video if you're interested. Let's talk about cooling. The CX4170A is designed to have three 120mm fans for front air intake. So naturally I chose three Noctua NF F12 IPPC 3000 RPM fans. We've talked about and used these fans in the past, and with their quiet performance and increased RPM speed when needed, they'll be perfect for this build. Lastly, we'll be topping the Epic CPU coolers with a Dytron A38 Threadripper cooler to keep our temps under control. Now that we've gone through everything, let's get on the building. The first task is to get the motherboard mounted into the Sligger CX4170A. To save time and to be safe with the hardware, we installed the RAM and CPU coolers on the motherboard before placing them in the case. If you can do this with your build, do it. It will save you a lot of time and hassle. The next step is to install the Noctua fans at the front of the case. The front bezel of the CX4170 egg comes off easily to provide access to the 120mm fan mounting holes. Now it's time to mount the PSU into the case. Pretty quick and easy to do, we'll connect the necessary cables in a bit. Next we'll connect the upfront panel connections for the case. First starting with the USB 3.0 header, followed by the power switch and power LED. Just three connections to make, pretty quick and simple. Next stop is to drop the GPU into the server. This GTX 1070 will be installed into the first 16x PCIe slot on the board and screwed in. We'll connect the power soon. Now we'll pull the drive cage and install two SU655 SSDs that will act as our mirror pair for our OS. The CX4170A supports up to 8 SSDs and has an odd way of handling them. 
Because the drive cage also supports 3.5 inch drives, to mount 2.5 inch disc means only one side of the disc are attached to the cage. Now it's time to cable up the PSU and all of the components. Lastly, we'll be dropping in the two 10G NICs. They are a pretty quick and easy install. And that'll do it for the build. We'll do some cable management inside and get them racked up later. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the end of the video. Thank you, John. Appreciate Thank you all coming here to question Brandon's life choices. Uh, so speaking of life choices, let's talk about your, uh, your server build here. What do you think? What do you think about the case? I really liked it. It was something that I found online and it had the, you know, the new honeycomb pattern that everyone's into. It's, it's sexy. It's got, you know, that metal ring with the LED light around it. It's got uh, USB-C, though I have a server motherboard, so rip that feature. <laughs> I, I think we're still on VGA in server land. Yeah, like we haven't, that's right. Yeah, no. We haven't switched to DisplayPort yet, so maybe that'll come one day. Um, yeah, it won't. Uh, <laughs> But in terms of building in it, I, I really like the build quality. It's it's nice stainless steel. It's got it feels really rigid. Um, it's great to build in. Though I question some of the use of the space. So I have a full ATX board and a full ATX power supply. Mm -hmm. um, and in the server, what the server supported, it, it does an EATX as well as two, two new standards we learned well, about. Yeah, the server SSI EEB and SSI CEB. Right. Yeah. Server server standards. But so and that would have expanded the entire length of the case. Right. Um, and what I found was when I got my SSDs in there, which the SSD bracket was a, a trip of its own because it had it just has two screws that plug into my two SSDs mm -hmm. and they're just kind of dangling there, half there, yeah. um, because it's meant to do a two and a half inch and a three and a half inch uh, bay for it all. But once you got it all in there, it was kind of just crunching all the mm -hmm. cables I had. Yeah. Um, and so I had to like awkwardly route them and stuff and do you know, cable management um that i did to to keep it there but i really like the case i think i'd definitely get another one so. all right awesome so speaking of these you built two of them mm -hmm. and we know that you're going to use them for compute yeah what os what's the plan there i think i'm going to definitely install esxi on one of them okay um and i think i'm going to install xcpng and give that a try okay um i've been kind of going back and forth between one of them xcpng for if you don't know is is a zen based fork it's all open source and uh, VMware is owned by Vertzilla, which is now owned by Broadcom. Yep. Um, but I've always used VMware. I like VMware. It's it's good. It's it's got lots of years of polish on it. And I, as Rich will blatantly tell you in as loud as voice possible, it's the best hypervisor in the world, and no one else should be using anything else. Prove me wrong. Um, Go ahead. But... Comments are right here. <laughs> Get down those comments. Tell me I'm wrong. But I thought I'd give it a try since I have identical hardware and kind of see where it goes. That's a good idea. And probably a good idea for a video too, right? So you have com two completely identical builds. Identical, I mean, entirely. Entirely There's, there's no, I mean, <laughs> down to the cases, right? And uh, you're going to be running two different hypervisors. It'd be a good chance that then we should probably make that into a video so we can yeah. really see if there's any any benefit or difference between one or the other. For sure. Yeah, I've definitely been playing with the, the management VMs for both. And there's a huge different feel. And there's uh, a big learning curve right now, mm. which we'll go. We'll definitely go into more detail later of kind of like, oh, well, I know how to do that in VMware, but how do I do it here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Type of to, to give one to one comparisons. So cool. All right. So I got to ask, we haven't really seen the final product in your, your case yet. I think we should bring up a photo and tell us about how awesome it looks. <laughs> I mean, it looks sick. You showed us a picture earlier. We'll pop it up on the screen right now. But yeah. I mean, you, I feel like you need to buy another one. Oh, yeah. You can fit like get, one get and a half more in there. Yeah, I know. I, I like <laughs> the the un, the un uh, 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 like useless need to fill all the, the slots in my rack. Must for no complete reason. the rack. Yeah. Maybe and... you could email them and be like, if you could sell just the faceplate. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> uh, without the rails, just give me something I can hide yeah. that one. Don't forget yeah. the USB-C. But. Yeah, <laughs> it needs that. I think I would have to super micro on the USB C side. Yeah, there you go. Right. Um, so let me ask you one last question, then we'll we'll, we'll leave. And that is, um, what out of doing all this now is there something that you would have done differently? Right. And there's always the question like, you know, it's it's been a while. You've got them racked up. You're you're running stuff on them. What's what things would you do better next time, or what things did you do right? Like, what? Give me the TLDR on that. Stuff I would do differently. I mean, I, I don't think there's too much I would have done. I kind of thought this out pretty well in terms of my stuff. Um, obviously, more RAM, better. More RAM, uh, better. <laughs> From ask, the mouths of ask, babes. Ask Adobe, they'll know. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. More RAM, about. better. Um, and I, I was kind of thinking if I wanted maybe some more local storage, maybe try something VSAN, ExoSAN, mm -hmm. just having local storage on board. Um, 
to kind of handle that, but I haven't made my mind up. That's kind of an addition. And the only other thing that I kind of regret, and I'm not too worried about it, but is I don't have redundant power supplies anymore. Oh yeah. That's um, true. So that's kind of like a letdown, but they do make a like ATX power supply with two nodes in it. Mm -hmm. It's also, at least at the time when I looked, was like $400 and I wasn't quite, like I, I already splurged for a, a platinum, like rated yeah. uh, PSU. I wasn't about to just, you know, drop like twice the price for just two modules. I'm, I mean, it makes sense, but I was just out of my, my budget for this. So I bought a whole second one. And yeah, then I have a budget yeah, anyways. That's, 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 <laughs> I, honestly, you know, when you get to the point where you're done and you've decided on a hypervisor, you'll have redundancy in that, right? So yeah. then maybe you used your, honestly, I think you used your money better because you saved the money from putting in the redundant power supplies for buying another node and more yeah. gear. And that's that seems like a smarter idea anyway, all day long, right? So yeah, that's that's the probably the only thing I kind of went back on was like, oh no, I don't really have a redundant power supply thing, but you know, bet bet on Corsair power supplies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> we'll see how that yeah, turns we'll out. We'll see if like tomorrow it just you know, puff the magic smoke comes out uh, and all my all my electronics stop working. Yeah, you'll you'll be going to the you're back to your house tonight, you'll yeah. walk into the garage like I smell ozone. Yeah, it's like, this? oh no. Oh. Yeah. And now that you finished this video, I bet you're dying for more home lab and virtualization, and we can help you out with that. Check out our playlist of virtualization and home lab videos over here.